Well, then, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We've seen a modest uptick in solar activity since yesterday, and my, 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 have we got some splentacular imagery indeed. Here at the Daily Space Weather, the main feature of the Smash News Network, these busted name and news, and congratulations to each one of you for realizing that our channel exists. Here's the equatorial view in this same wavelength. That's 24 hours of 171 angstroms from the SDO, the Solar Dynamics Observatory. That is ionized iron and the extreme ultraviolet emissions thereof. You may see some activity happening down here. And again, make sure you stay tuned until the coronal mass ejection section of this video as we've got some slow-mos that will blow your mind. We also do have a new sunspot that just formed up here in the northern hemisphere. That'll be 3317, I think. This group right here, that is brand new. It looked like it was beta gamma class, but we'll show you high res imagery of that as well. Before we move on to our meteorology segment and see that cyclone that is bearing down on Philippines. Here's the southwestern limb. We do have a number of large sunspot groups currently on the solar disk and the likelihood of a large solar flare is rising as they approach the western limb. Fantastic imagery there. That is good stuff. We do have some active regions also rising over here on the east. They were not sunspots. When we did show prep today, they could be sunspots. This group closer to the equator looks pretty bright. So we'll be keeping an eye on that throughout the day today. And when I say eye on, well, pardon the pun. Here we've uh, added 193 angstroms. You can see that large CME happening in the southeastern limb yesterday. And here it is in 304 plus 193 angstroms. We dropped the 171 and added one, uh, 304. So that's ionized helium and iron. And again, that is some sweet imagery indeed, folks. Here's a close-up in our full frame speed. Uh, we usually show 30 frames per second. And again, when we get to the coronal mass ejection section of this video, there will be some slow-mo breakdowns that you won't want to miss. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Here's the full disk view in, this, in these wavelengths, 304 plus 193 angstroms. So good stuff there. And let's take a look at sunspots briefly here. There is yesterday plus today. Again, we do have one new sunspot group up here. Besides that, most of those sunspot groups have been stable for the past 24 hours. Here's yesterday plus today. Colorized magnetogram from SDO. And let's briefly pause to see what's going on on croissant Earth. Yeah, Earth. It's croissant-shaped. Stop believing NASA's lies, folks. Neil deGrasse Tyson out there telling people Earth is an oblate spheroid. Oh, my gosh. It's just uh, tisk tisk. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Shiva Luch is erupting and producing a 14,000-foot plume of volcanic ash on the Kamchatka Peninsula. It's a flight level 140. Sakura Jima exploded, flight level 090. Semeru, discrete volcanic ash, produced a 16,000-foot ash plume. I don't see what's discrete about a over three-mile high plume of volcanic ash over East Java, Indonesia. It's a flight level 160. Flight level 170 over Popocatépetl. Rincon de la Vieja in Costa Rica, now back on the list, exploding, producing a 12,000-foot plume of volcanic ash. And please do not pull vault the caldera. If you're going on a volcanic vacation, leave your vault pole at home. Sangay exploding in Ecuador, flight level 200, and Saban Kaya, continuous emissions over Peru. Another reminder to heed volcanic warnings. Don't be in a pyroclastic flow or a phreatic eruption, as those tend to be unhealthful for people like you. Here's global seismicity over the past 90 days, and it's been fairly calm as far as earthquakes. Let's run up the list. We'll cite quakes above a 5 magnitude. 
So this is one of the largest in the past 24, indeed a 5.5 in the South Sandwich Islands region. One of the most seismically active portions of the planet here for the past several months, maybe even like a year. South Sandwich Islands region. It's been shaken and shaken and shaken and shaken. Continuing on the list, Indonesia had a 5.2. That was at 1936, yesterday evening, Universal Time, 1936, Universal Time. Solomon Islands had a 5.6 this morning at 329, Universal Time. Afghanistan had a deep quake at 5.2, over 220 kilometers estimated depth there. That quake was at 549 this morning. On May 28th, 2023, and those are the quakes of a 5-plus magnitude. And let's get back to space. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux has dipped. Actually, it's come back up. It's now at 157 solar flux units. And for you new viewers out there, the radio flux comes from the upper chromosphere and lower corona, just above what we would call the solar surface. Those of us who are enlightened enough to believe that the sun has a real surface. <laughs> anyway, 10.7 centimeter radio flux is a proportional data set to sunspot number. As you may see from this one year graph, the black line is the radio flux, the red line is the sunspot number, and you can see how proportional all of those peaks are. And we've recently broken back out above the 155 point, which again seems to be a support level for solar cycle 25. We're waiting for an extended break out of that. The radio flux did reach all the way to 234 solar flux units back in March. Space Weather Enthusiast Dashboard is forecasting a little bit of geomagnetic unrest late in the day tomorrow. Not sure what the reasoning for that is. It may be a CME impact, but if so, it's going to be a minor one. No space weather storms or solar storms or geomagnetic storms or whatever you'd like to call them are currently in the forecast. And let's take a look at Earth's magnetic moment from space for the past four hours. And it's a very low pressure plasma environment currently around planet Earth. Why? a very low density solar wind. So that might look pretty pathetic as far as the <laughs> magneto hydrodynamic pressure. Again, the solar wind is very diffuse at the moment. We'll get to it here momentarily. Again, this is the past four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from space. And here is Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. Again, it's the last four hours. And these times of extreme geomagnetic calm are great times to look at where, where you anticipate the poles to actually be. Are they going to flip? Let us know in the comments what you think. I think not. Not even close. Where's the quadrupole? Where's the octopole? We ain't seeing it. Next, the KP index, or planetary K index, as the Space Weather Prediction Center refers to it. It's currently 2.66 rounded to 2.6 it's 2 point bar 6 which would be rounded to 2.67 you could say 2 and 2 thirds for the KP index it's an average of global geomagnetism and here's the real time solar wind I was talking about look at the diffuseness the di diffuseness is that a word look at how diffuse the solar wind density is here 10 I mean point ten, point 0.1 so it's you got to have 10 cubic centimeters to have one proton that's how diffuse it is out in space at the moment that is measured by the ACE at the moment. Here you can see this green bar at the bottom indicating that it's the ACE spacecraft. Solar wind speed here, 450 kilometers per second. Solar wind density, one-tenth of a proton per cubic centimeter. And we did see some uh, geomagnetic activity here, and it was all a result of the magnetic field. So this top line here had a strong BZ signal for an extended period there in the negative territory. That negative BZ signal is associated with higher electrical current into Earth's system. And you can see that evidenced on the GOES magnetometers. So there are the GOES magnetometers for the past three days. We saw an interesting spike there on the GOES-16 around midnight local time. 
which is typically the weakest point for the satellite. So some magnetic anomalies happening there on the in the geosynchronous near equatorial orbits of the GOES-16 and GOES-18, despite the very diffuse solar wind. Some current there induced into the Earth system by that negative BZ, the vertical component of the magnetic field. Next our top view ecliptic plane field plot. And this is a reason to make an actual forecast for space weather. So you see this green blob here? That is North Pole magnetism hanging out at the North Heliographic Pole. What's the relevance? Well, the relevance is that it's about to leave. It looks like it's about to snap away from the North Pole, which means we're going to see a significant uptick in coronal holes in the North Pole current sheet. By the way, Earth has just entered the North Pole current sheet. So we are waiting for that coronal hole at the North Heliographic Polar Region to leave the North Heliographic Polar Region, because until then, we're not really at solar maximum. So again, you can expect a rapid uptick as you watch that leave. This Gong 2 data is one of the most important data sets that we have, if not the most important data set that we have in actual solar forecasting, <clears throat> as opposed to fictional solar forecasting, which is what a lot of hack frauds on YouTube are doing. Just making complete fools of themselves. But until our papers publish about the solar cycles, how would you really have the correct inputs if you don't understand the mechanism underlying the solar cycles in the first place? Anywhere that there's the latest image, keep an eye on that little blob of green there. It's going to snap away from the North Heliographic Pole, and when it does, you can expect a massive and precipitous uptick in solar activity. Here's our line of sight field plot, and that is depicting the solar B field in blue, North Polar field in green, South Polar field in red. Also, the grayscale portion of that is the gong magnetogram. And there is a lot of magnetic organization in the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk. Will we see that coronal hole leave the North Pole? for this Carrington rotation while the north oriented current sheet is currently at Earth. As you can see, Earth has just recently snapped into that North Pole current sheet. Stereo B is coming next. Anyway, let's move to coronal holes. Since I've already brought those up, here's our coronal hole line of sight field plot. And we've got North Pole-oriented coronal holes rotating in. Here is the view from SDO 211 angstroms. So over there on the east side, you've got North Pole coronal holes. So these are North Pole. These are South Pole. Sector boundary crossing is somewhere in here. And let's move to sunspots. So here's a sunspot situation. We've got a, sun, a new group that just formed up here where that number one is. That'll be named 3317. Besides that, those groups have been largely stable for the past 24 hours. And let's take a look at the STO 211 plus 171 angstrom's wavelengths before we move to our SDO continuum. So here's SDO continuum, and you can see sunspot 3317 forming there just west of center heliographic longitudes. That's a lot of sunspots, and as you can see, uh, no less than half a dozen of those are larger than the Earth. We've also got 1600 plus 1700 angstroms for you to show a little bit of additional detail and activity. The 1600 angstroms wavelength is ionized carbon. And the 1700 angstroms wavelength uh, is a series of different chemical signatures. It's not a specific chemical species. The 1700 angstroms, the 1600 angstroms is ionized carbon. 
So there's a great view, uh, most of those sunspots in the west. And as those large sunspots get closer to the limb, their likelihood of producing a large flare of M or even X class, well, it seems to be rising. Sunspots, they like to make a big entrance and a big exit by showing large flares when they are at the limb, as opposed to in the earth facing portion, the center portion of the solar disk. An effect known to many as the earth facing quiet. Next, we'll move on to energetic particles and solar flares. So there is your GOES proton flux. No spikes of note in the GOES proton flux. No energetic particles generated recently. And check it out once again, a large solar flare occurring while we stream the show. So maybe the sun's trying to send you a message here. This was a, looks like an M-class flare to me. It's an M1.01 magnitude flare. Looks like it's of decently long duration, too. Exciting stuff going on there. And if you've got comments to leave directly for El Sol Helios, a.k.a. the Sun, leave them in our comments. Many of our viewers are convinced that the Sun watches our videos. Hopefully it doesn't use a smartphone because they're about as smart as uh, a brick. Anyway, here is a good wavelength, a good couple of wavelengths to view solar flares. 94 plus 131 angstroms. And that is some sweet imagery indeed. Let us know in the comments where you think that latest flare came from. I've got some ideas, uh, but I'm not going to divulge them. So let's move on to taking a moment to talk about the channel. First, we're located in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, and this is what's going on over our head. I just pressed now. The sun's only a few degrees over the horizon there. And you might see the Pleiades if you are up before dawn, rising just ahead of the sun there. Also, Jupiter and Mercury and Saturn are currently overhead over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. That star charts from skyandtelescope.org. And a little bit more about the channel. We founded our website back in 2019 as a result of pathetic and disgusting putrid censorship on Facebook. We got banned or something, temp banned or something like that for absolutely no reason. So we launched our own website as Facebook's, well, as Meta's, I guess they were still called Facebook in 2019, as their share price declined. Yeah, they're worried about virtual reality. Hey, hey Meta, were you aware that video games have been around for decades that feature virtual reality? Nobody needs your software. Nobody cares about your software. And Facebook, aka now known as Meta, is one of the most pathetic software manufacturers in the history of the world. Some of the least secure software and most pathetic junkware that you'll ever see anywhere. Meta, what a joke. It's up there with certain other big tech organizations. Although, hey Meta, thanks for incentivizing us to create our own dot com. Your pathetic and ridiculous behavior as you self-destruct helped us to increase our reach. Smashomash.com and welcome to the Neo-Renaissance where we cite facts. By the way, I published a poem on Twitter and on Instagram. So make sure you follow us there. Today's featured product is Do the Math, which features beautiful imagery of the core of the Milky Way galaxy. And if some hack fraud on YouTube is telling you that the galaxy is dangerous, or that the structure of the solar system and the galaxy are in any way similar, well, I'm hoping you don't believe them because that is truly pathetic and ridiculous cosmology nonsense. The local interstellar environment is filamentary and the galaxy does not behave in any way like the solar system. So anyway, do the math, eight equals 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 capital D. This product features Sagittarius A star right under the third equal sign there in our do the math equation. Lots of other merch available there, like over 30 items, 30 different designs in various different products. You can find links below the video and on the homepage to the Redbubble shop. Also links to the Amazon shop. We've just recently added some new products there. So check out our picks there. We are now able to endorse some things and the paid affiliate slash sponsors 
also include hemp lucid so please use the promo code smashomash for your hemp lucid purchases save 10 percent on your order by entering the promo code smashomash thanks to all of our affiliate slash sponsors thanks to the smash team and thanks for everybody who has done their part to help support the channel if you're unable to open your cobweb encrusted wallet and send us a few bucks per month by becoming a member of the smash team well consider helping us out with clicks smashomash.com slash smash team is our subscription services site this was launched in october of 2021 because we needed superior capabilities to patreon although we still are on patreon you can donate via paypal and again, if you're unable or unwilling to open your cobweb encrusted wallet and help us out by sending us a few bucks per month to produce the content, help us out with clicks, visit us on social media, press the share button, comment, etc. And here is your solar system forecast. So this is where things are now. Heavenly bodies, that is. And here's where they'll be in one week. That'll be June 4th. It looks like the full moon will be on the 5th the 4th, the 5th, something like that. I don't really care which day. And let's move to our coronagraphs. So here are yesterday's coronagraphs, and you may see a rather spectacular CME there coming out of the eastern limb, which would be on your left. It, it is not earthly directed. It's somewhat on the opposite side of the sun and to the east. So here are today's coronagraphs, an additional 36 frames. Not a lot going on there. And here are our Lasco coronagraphs. And fasten your seatbelts because we've got some spectacular imagery for you here after we show you Stereo A and Soho Lasco C3. We show this diagram because Stereo A is overtaking Earth and it's, it's about to be to our west soon and Stereo B is being overtaken by the Earth, and it's going to be to our east soon, as you can see there on that image. Stereo A and B very close to planet Earth at the moment, not helping us out very much with uh, calculating the trajectory of coronal mass ejections. So we'll let these images play through. Keep in mind they're not synced. There are time and date stamps at the bottom. And we can see that CME coming out yesterday on the right side there Soho Lasco C3 showing that around 1300 universal time yesterday and the filamentary event that was associated with that coronal mass ejection that started around 1130 universal time yesterday and before we get to filaments let's show you some of these CME images so there is uh, these are 24 hour videos these are not slowed down we do not anticipate those any of those coronal mass ejections to be earthly directed. Fingers crossed that they are, but based on the available imagery here, we do not anticipate that they are. There may be a minor strike on the 30th. Maybe that's what Noah was forecasting late in the day on the 29th. If so, that will be very minor. Again, we covered it on yesterday's daily space weather video. Here's just 193 angstroms by itself. It's another 24-hour video from SDO. And this large filament down here in the southeast is still intact, at least last we checked. Here we've added 171 plus 304 angstroms. That is another 24-hour video. And here we've slowed it down. So here are some slow-mo images of yesterday's quite spectacular coronal mass ejection. We've slowed that down to 10 frames per second instead of 30. It's, it's at 30% speed. We've also got that imagery in 193 plus 304 angstroms. Wait for it. This should not disappoint. We'll let it play through once more for your viewing pleasure.
We don't always slow these down this way, but these were so scenic that we decided to do it. Here's 304 angstroms alone. And these are 12 and a half hour videos, by the way. The time frame here is 1130 Universal Time on May 27th through midnight. There you go, 304 angstroms. And we've also zoomed out to show you how different it looks from the coronagraph as that gas quickly diffuses. So here you'll see that CME happen in spectacular detail. And as you can see, it looks like much of that plasma collapsed back down toward the solar surface. But you can see on the coronagraph how much material made it out into space. So it can be very deceptive if you only look at the SDO imagery. Hence, we have these coronagraphs to help to forecast coronal mass ejection impacts. Here's a further zoom out. This will show the C3 as well. And you can see that gas diffusing. Some quite dense material there in that coronal mass ejection. Too bad it wasn't earthly directed. It could have caused a great geomagnetic storm condition. Here we've zoomed out even further to show you the full extent of the Soho Lasco C3. And you can see that CME is actually very filamentary. Sometimes these CMEs come out and they look like bubbles. This one looks like a series of strings. We'll let that play through a second time just to reinforce what I've just stated. Sometimes CMEs look like bubbles. Sometimes coronal mass ejections look like strings. This one has a completely different structure than those bubble-like CMEs, which often contain a denser core. And let's move on to return to the regularly scheduled daily space weather. Next thing we're looking at are plasma filaments from the ground-based solar observatory at Udaipur, India. So there's Udaipur, India's ground-based solar observatory in hydrogen alpha. You can see there are several large solar filaments that are on the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk, those dark absorption features. And the likelihood of coronal mass ejections remains nearly 100%. And if you're wondering where that M-class flare came from, so are we. Was it over here? I think it was over here. Nope, it was this group down here. So there's that M-class flare. Again, that one coming through while we created the show. And of course, since these videos are so time sensitive, we do endeavor to get them onto your screens as quickly as we can. So let's get to our bonus feature segment and then our meteorology segment as again, they are quite time sensitive. So here is your satellite's community dashboard and there are only some minor charging hazards here at the moment of the surface charging variety. Again, they are minor and they are around the eastern Pacific, Mexico, etc., north of the equator. Goes electron flux here showing a big dip in the past several hours. Early this morning, a big dip in the Goes electron flux there. And there is the one-year graph to put the relativistic electrons in context. And there is the NOAA forecast model. The green boxes are the forecast. The yellow diamonds are the observation. No arguments from me there. And let's take a look at the layer of the atmosphere where that electron flux is measured. The F layer, it's at about 300 kilometers of altitude. And here's the vibrational frequency. This data, by the way, is Australia Government Bureau of Meteorology. And there are many different interesting space weather 
data sets available on their website. This shows the previous day at 2 hours per second, vibrational frequency in megahertz, millions of vibrations per second, at the bridge between Earth and space. Here's the anomaly gram showing anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median. And now we're getting a split, an equatorial split. High frequency anomalies north of the equator, low frequency anomalies largely south of the equator. We'll make sure that plays through at least once more. And then we'll show you the total electron content forecast. So that's what's going on up there in the ionosphere at about 300 kilometers of altitude. There is the latest image Ionogram 1045 universal time, 1045 universal time anomalygram. Total electron content is free electrons up to about 12,500 miles of altitude. It'll show you the likely places for GPS errors as free electrons can cause signal refraction. Here's a coupled thermosphere, ionosphere, plasmasphere, electrodynamics model, the total electron content forecast. So we are expecting some significant GPS errors at perhaps unexpected locations. If you're expecting your GPS to not perform well, perhaps use Wi-Fi location accuracy. Sadly, if your Wi-Fi, if there are no Wi-Fi hotspots around where you're navigating, you may be SOL for GPS-based navigation in large portions of the planet. Again, we are seeing some free electrons here in some abnormal spots. And we'll also show the total electron content anomaly over North America. So this is the anomaly from the 10-day average. We can see some high electron signals there around the Caribbean, around the Tropic of Cancer, southern Mexico, Central America. We'll let it play through one more time for you there before we show the latest SDO images in high res. So if that's an earthquake signal, maybe there's a large earthquake coming to Central America, Mexico, or the Caribbean. Not so sure about that. Keep in mind, this is like a four-day off signal, and it only forecasts earthquakes over a six magnitude. Not exactly sure about that, whether that's able to be done or not. There are some science papers that indicate that it is. So here's your latest rock back showing magnetic fields, and this sunspot's looking pretty weak. So there are the fields. It is beta gamma class. It does have a leading north pole umbra, a trailing north pole umbra, and a south pole umbra there. It's got just enough polarity complexity to make it a beta gamma class sunspot group. 3317 will be the name of that one later today. There's your full disk view. And let's briefly run up the eastern limb here to see if any of those rising active regions have sunspots. Possible new sunspot forming down here also. Anyway, here's the eastern limb. I don't see any dark umbrae there. What about you? So one or possibly two new named sunspot groups likely today. And let's move on to meteorology. Since there's a massive storm bearing down on the northern portion of the Philippines, uh, check it out. We've got Nearly 50-foot waves there in the Western Pacific. This imagery depicts wind as well as wave height. So the uh, colored portion is the wave height. Again, about 50-footers there. And the uh, animated portion is the wind. Anyway, that's the windiest place on the Earth. We decided to show it again. It's the Earth's lowest pressure system as well. And those things typically go hand in hand, obviously. And keep in mind, folks, an important thing to understand about weather is that low pressure systems suck, which means the wind over here is blowing toward it. The wind over here is blowing toward it. Everything is blowing toward it. High pressure systems blow. They rotate counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere and winds emanate from them not to them anyway those are the surface winds here are the jet streams of the east jet streams of the west 
incoherent jet streams over the U.S. once again. Look at the huge meridional bends. The jet stream blowing a little bit backwards here over the east central U.S. Canada getting a bunch of warm air being blown into central Canada there. It looks like some warm weather for Canada. Here are the surface winds of the western world. Strong low down here in the South Pacific. Here are the jets. Here are the surface winds rather of the central portion of the planet, Europe, Africa, and the, and the Central Asia. Maybe it's politically incorrect to call Central Asia the Middle East now. Whatever. <laughs> and there are the jet streams. You got to stay on top of your terminology, folks. Otherwise, you might misgender a country. Don't want to misgender a country, folks. And by the way, some countries actually have genders, like like Germany and Switzerland, for example. Anyway, here's some satellite imagery of this storm, which looks a little bit less organized than it was yesterday. I think the wind speeds are a little bit lower. Give that a minute to spool up there. It'll be well worth the wait. That is the last two hours. Satellite imagery there from windy.com. Another important thing to understand, folks, is that there is a bunch of warm water there around the Philippines. So this thing is moving. It's still moving. Well, it does look like it's moving mainly just west now. So, and of course, one of the great features is that you can view the sea, the sea temperature on Windy.com. Put down a probe, it's 86 degrees there. So that is some warm water. There is certainly a lot of convective energy available. And let's take a look at what's going on over the Americas. So here is clouds and fog depicted by the 3.9 micrometer infrared radiation map. One of the many great NASA GOES interactive weather satellite data sets. Croissant Earth being projected onto a fake Adobe Photoshop spherical template. And here is our weather.gov map. Pardon my sarcasm. I understand that I have a very dry sense of humor. I endeavor to be on the Newhart scale of dryness. What the heck happened here? All right, there we go. So there are your weather alerts. We've scrolled down to show you the key. If your location is lit, click your location. Got some severe weather there in southwestern Nebraska and let's show some forecasts. So here is your holiday weekend forecast. Let us know if you're having a picnic today and what you're having. I think we're having dogs and worsts or no we're having I think we're having worsts and pasta. Uh, anyway that's pressure and precipitation for the next 72 hours based on a GFS model. We'll also show temperatures. Here's your temperature forecast based on the same GFS 72 hour model and we show 72 hour forecasts because they tend to be accurate if you've if you're watching YouTube channels that show you like one week forecasts they are being accurate yeah accurate why because they're hacks showing a one week forecast is just ridiculous and it's about as silly as attempting to forecast the climate 50 years in advance if you can't forecast the weather four days in advance, why are you showing one-week forecasts or two-week forecasts or three-week forecasts? Get your head out of your posterior and show accurate information on your channel, Hack Frauds. If you're wondering if those temperatures are anomalous or not, don't worry. We've got the temperature anomaly as well. This is temperature anomaly based on the same model. Once again, the 72-hour GFS. Keep in mind it is in degrees Celsius. This imagery here is in degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're wondering if those temperatures are anomalous, it will be below freezing in portions of the Rockies. All that hot air is not warming up the state sufficiently to produce warm weather. So much hot air coming out of Colorado, geez. No wonder there's a drought in the central U.S. They're downwind from all that hot air. 
Continuing on to our lightning mapper, and there was some severe lightning across southern Texas here and also across the Mexico border. A long lightning also stretched across northeastern Colorado and to Nebraska. Let's see what's going on currently. Do we have any terrestrial strikes? Well, next time you hear thunder, try consulting lightningmaps.org. Many of our viewers are impressed. And it is highly recommended. Well, if we do have terrestrial strikes, they've slowed, da they've slowed down here. Anyway, here's your global lightning map. Quite a bit of lightning there in both Eastern and Western Europe. Also some Canadian, some Atlantic, and some Mexican lightning happening. We do have some terrestrial strikes here in the U.S. There's some isolated thunder showers there. They are pretty minor, and let's move on to our U.S. Doppler radar map. We'll briefly show the full 50 states view, since there is some precipitation happening in Alaska. Shout out to our viewers from all 50 states and from around the world. We hope you're able to forecast your own weather. Knowing a little bit about atmospheric physics makes a huge difference. There's the lower 48 view. Here is the clouds and fog view. And you can see the effects of this jet stream blowing in this strange fashion like this. So there's going to be a lot of storms that are moving in odd directions in places like West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, etc. Again, the jet stream blowing partially to the west there. It's blowing northwest, which is totally not the normal way for it to go. It'll be more obvious in the water vapor map view. And there you can see those significant influences happening there. We do have an upper level low there that is continuing to be kind of weak as it is surrounded by dry, massive air. So all these areas are effective high pressure zones. That is a high pressure zone that acts like a blocking feature. This is a high pressure zone that acts as an impulse. You can see it's pushing weather toward Bermuda and it's constraining this relative low over uh, Indiana and Ohio. Anyway, here's your recap, US Doppler radar. How about clouds and fog? The cloudiest place is Texas. And you can see rapid, heavy rainfall happening there as water vapor vanishes from the map. Hopefully, your, hopefully our videos haven't vanished from your YouTube feed. And hopefully all of the crap, nonsense, propaganda, and disinformation on YouTube has vanished. Remember, folks, accountability always comes. No matter how pathetic you are, no matter how much of a hack fraud you are, and no matter how many people believe your nonsense, accountability always comes. Anyway, we'll see you soon at the Smash News Network, least busted name and news. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash o -Mash, signing off. And may that solar wind be at your back. Back to the bunker, folks. Oh, my God, I'm so spooked. See ya. It's time to put it down.